Hello and welcome to The Chemistry Solution. This tutorial is on atomic numbers, mass numbers, and isotopes. The atomic number of an atom is the same as the number of protons. All atoms of the same element have the same number of protons in the nucleus, so it's the number of protons that an atom has that defines what type of an atom it is. The mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons in an atom. Where isotopes are atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons, and hence different mass numbers. And remember, for all isotopes of the same element, the number of protons remains the same. Let's take a look at how these numbers are represented in a chemical symbol. X would be the symbol of the element. A is the mass number, which is written as a superscript on the left side of the element symbol, and is again the number of protons and neutrons in the element and B is the atomic number, which equals the number of protons. Now because we already have our elemental symbol written, and the atomic number is always the same for any atom of a given element, including the atomic number in the chemical symbol is often redundant, and so we often don't see B written. And likewise, the mass number A is usually only listed when you're trying to specify the isotope of a particular atom. How can we determine then how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in an atom of a given element? Well, the number of protons is the same as the atomic number, and that can always be found on the periodic table. For a neutral atom, the number of electrons will always equal the number of protons. And because the mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, when you take the mass number and subtract the atomic number, that will equal the number of neutrons in the atom. Let's take a look at some examples. So how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in the following atoms? Looking at our first example, the symbol U stands for the element uranium. When we look up uranium on the periodic table, we see that the atomic number is 92. Remember, there are two numbers given on your periodic table. The top number is the atomic number. The bottom number is a weighted average of the mass numbers of all naturally occurring isotopes. Because the atomic number is always equal to the number of protons, we know that uranium must always have 92 protons. In a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons and so in this example, uranium must also have 92 electrons. We also know that the number of neutrons is equal to the mass number, in this case 238, minus the atomic number, which is 92, and so this isotope of uranium has 146 neutrons. Moving to our second example, we can find the symbol for neodymium on the periodic table and see that the atomic number for neodymium is 60. That must mean all atoms of neodymium have 60 protons. And again, in a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons, so neodymium in this case must also have 60 electrons. And the number of neutrons is equal to the mass number, in this case 144, minus the atomic number, which would be 60, so this isotope of neodymium has 84 neutrons. And one last example, Hg is the symbol for mercury, so when we look that up on the periodic table, we see that the atomic number for mercury is 80, which means that mercury must have 80 protons. And if we have a neutral mercury atom, it must also have 80 electrons. If this isotope of mercury has a mass number of 201, then this isotope must have 121 neutrons. Now let's try to fill in the following table, assuming that we have all neutral atoms. This would be a great time to pause the tutorial and try these examples on your own. We will fill out this table going column by column. Looking in the first column, if something has six protons, we know that the atomic number must be equal to six. And when we look up the element with the atomic number of six on the periodic table, we see that that element is carbon, with the elemental symbol C. Because the number of protons is always equal to the atomic number, 
these two rows on our chart will always have the same value. In a neutral carbon atom, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So carbon has six electrons in this example. And the mass number is equal to the number of protons, six, plus the number of neutrons, eight, which gives us a mass number of 14. Moving to the next column. If an atom has 78 electrons and it's a neutral atom, it must also have 78 protons. Because protons are always equal to the atomic number, the atomic number will also be 78. And when we look up the element with the atomic number 78 on the periodic table, we'll see that that element is platinum with the symbol PT. The number of neutrons is equal to the mass number, 195, minus the atomic number, which is 78, which gives us 117 neutrons for this isotope of platinum. Moving to the next column, if the atomic number is equal to 35, we also know that this atom has 35 protons. And if we look up the element that has atomic number 35 on the periodic table, we can see that this element is bromine with the symbol Br. Because we are assuming all neutral atoms in this chart, Bromine must also have 35 electrons. And again, the mass number is equal to the number of neutrons plus the number of protons, so 44 plus 35, which gives us a mass number of 79. And in our last example, if we're looking at the element with the atomic number of 48, we know that this element must have 48 protons. And if we look up atomic number 48 on our periodic table, we see that this element is cadmium with the elemental symbol CD. Once again, because we are assuming all neutral atoms in this example, if cadmium has 48 protons, it must also have 48 electrons. And the number of neutrons is equal to the mass number, 112, minus the atomic number, 48, which means this isotope of cadmium has 64 neutrons. Now let's talk about ions. So a neutral atom can either gain or lose electrons to form ions. If a neutral atom gains electrons, it becomes negatively charged, and we give that ion the term anion. Now we're talking about gaining an electron, but we remember that electrons are negatively charged, so if we're gaining negative charge, the atom itself becomes negatively charged. If a neutral atom loses electrons, so it loses that negative charge, it can become positively charged, and we call that ion a cation. This means we need to add one more number to our chemical symbol. Now let's fill in the following table for ions. Again, this would be a great time to stop this tutorial and try this on your own. Starting with the first column, Fe2+. We know that all atoms of iron will always have the same number of protons. And looking at our periodic table, we can see that the number of protons in an iron atom is 26. The atomic number, once again, is always equal to the number of protons, so the atomic number is also 26. Now we need to determine the number of electrons. Because our ion of iron, Fe2+, has a positive 2 charge, we know that it must have lost two electrons, or two negative charges. So this ion of iron must have 24 electrons. We calculate the mass number the same way we did previously, by adding the number of neutrons and the number of protons, or the atomic number. So 31 plus 26 gives us a mass number of 57. Moving on to the second column. We have an ion that has 16 protons. We also know that the number of protons is equal to the atomic number. Because this ion has 16 protons and 18 electrons, so two extra negative charges, we know that this ion must have a charge of minus two. When we look at our periodic table, we see that the element that always has 16 protons is sulfur. So we know this must be a sulfur minus 2 ion. And again, to calculate the number of neutrons, we take the mass number, 32, minus the atomic number, which would give us 16 neutrons. Moving to the third column, I minus. When we look up iodine on the periodic table, we can see that all atoms of iodine have 53 protons, which must also mean that the atomic number is 53. 
Because our iodine ion has a charge of negative 1, we know that it must have one more electron than it does protons. So it must have 54 electrons. To calculate the number of neutrons, we take the mass number, 127, minus the atomic number, or number of protons, which gives us 74. And moving to our last example. Something that has 29 protons must have an atomic number of 29. If it also has 28 electrons, we know that it has one less electron than protons, so it must have a positive one charge. Looking up the atom with the atomic number 29 on the periodic table tells us that in this case we must have a copper plus one ion. And we calculate the number of neutrons by taking the mass number 63 minus the number of protons or atomic number 29 to come up with 34 neutrons. Thank you for watching The Chemistry Solution. 